Excellent. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Holiday Printmaker class. I'm so excited that you're here in class today. I want to introduce myself. I'm Shannon Kendall. I work here as the project design team, which is the in-house, um, basically, designers that make all of the finished products with all the awesome supplies made by American Crafts, We Are Memory Keepers, and all those wonderful brands that come through American Crafts. So I get to create all day as my job, and it's super fun, and I'm excited to be here today to tell you about some things that I love about the printmaker by We Are Memory Keepers. Okay, so if you haven't got your hands on your little printmaker yet, here's mine, and you're going to love it. One of my new favorite pastimes is to walk the aisles of Michael's and think of all the things that I could print on. <laughs> and today you're going to see a lot of ideas that I came up with just by doing that very thing. So Christmas is coming. A little bit more about me. I am a, have a blended family of five and five kids. So we're like super charged Brady Bunch of 10 kids. And so we have a lot of fun at Christmas and I like to do customized packaging for all of our gifts under the tree. And the printmaker makes it super easy to do that. So we're gonna jump right in. Now for this class, I'm going to basically show you I'll cover a few of the basics and you'll see me working in the printmaker app. But if you want a specific like walkthrough, how to log in, connect your printmaker, how to like find an image in the app, you'll see me doing it today, but I'm not really going to focus on that so much in this class. I have taught past classes and so has Ali Dosdall through Michaels and you should be able to go and find those more technical type of printmaker classes. Today, I just wanted to have fun and make as many Christmas gift wrap projects as I could and print on as many different things as I could, just to give you a ton of ideas of what you can do with this awesome little tool. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in. So I've already connected my printmaker to my phone and here is the app. And so where I like to start when I'm designing projects is I kind of just go through, I'm a subscriber, so you can subscribe or you can buy individual collections, but I just like to go through and look at what images there are that I might like to use. So a good one that I've pulled from this time is the holidays collection. So this one has a bunch of different images from all the holidays, but you'll see it has fun winter and uh, Christmas icons in there. Another, there's just a bunch of cute images in here. Um, let's see, what's the other one I pulled from? I pulled from Hey Santa. This one's really cute. It's all the Hey Santa images from the Crate Paper Collection. And then there's another one that I used a lot today. It's called Cozy and Bright. This is a Pebbles collection. Has all kinds of little happy holidays. But you know what? You're not only restricted to just those. You'll see in class today that I pulled some different leaves and sprigs of plants and different things like that from other collections. And another one of my very favorites is the Not So Basic Shapes. Sorry, I have a lot of folders in here now that I've created, so I have to scroll through. Okay, not so basic shapes. This is another one of my favorite ones to go to because it has lots of fun basics that you can add to the designs. The scallop I'll use today. So there's just a lot of fun things. So familiarize yourself with your app. Go in and look at all the images, find some things that you want to do, and then you know what I do? I just print a bunch of them. So you can see here on my my paper before I actually print on my project, I just have a scrap paper. This was just a piece of 12 by 12 that I had. And I just use it to print and test print all of my images to make sure the colors are how I like them, to make sure the size is what I want. Because sometimes on my screen, I'll get deceived. I'll think this is really tiny. And then I print it and it actually turns out bigger than I thought, or I need to upsize it. And so this is just a good way to not use up your actual like printable items just by testing it first and making sure it's going to fit and that it's the colors and everything that you want. Okay, we're going to jump right in. First thing we're gonna to do today is make a gift bag. So these white gift bags are at Michael's. They're super fun because you can change them and do whatever you want to with them. And then I added these little wooden tags. So this was a little set of tags that I picked up at Michael's for Christmas. I used up all the squares, but we're gonna use circles and then I'm going to show you how everything that's printed on here, the bag is print, printed on, the tag is printed on, the ribbon is printed, and the tissue paper is printed with the name of my niece, so Andalyn. So we like to do four gifts for Christmas, so this was kind of my representation of that. So we do something you need, something to wear, something you want, 
and something to read, right? I said that in the wrong order, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so let's start just by grabbing our bag. Now our bag is kind of bumpy because of the handles, but it's fine. The printmaker can roll over it just perfectly. And I always like to use the magnetic mat that's on the supply list and the templates. So there's a 12 inch and a six inch template guide, okay? So I think for this one, I do need the 12 inch one. And what I love about these is it gives a little space right here before the numbers start for your printmaker to sit on. And that zero lines up exactly where the print is going to start when you start your printmaker. As long as in your app, you design your image to start at zero. So you'll see what I mean by that. Okay, we're gonna do some stripes. Okay, so these stripes, I'm going to be using stuff that I've pre-designed. So this is my own collection I made. As I made my designs, I saved them in my own collection that I was able to name the Michael's gift wrap class. So I'm gonna go in and find this polka dot that I made. There's a lot of images in here. Okay, so this one was actually in the Hey Santa collection and it is just a repeatable pattern. So I didn't do anything else to design this. I'm just gonna hit print. And then right here, I'm going to go in and do the repeatable pattern. And since I'm just gonna put it at infinite, you can estimate like it's gonna be three or four times, but it will stop when I stop the printer. So I just usually put it on infinite. Then I'm going to click send to printer. And what that will do will repeat that pattern for me. Okay, I got the little message from my printer that it's ready. And you can see how I've lined up the zero right to the top of the edge of my bag. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hit the action button. I also like this ruler because it helps me to space things properly and to put things straight. Okay, so you can see our first little print there, right? There it is, our little stripe. And you can see it didn't even flinch at the handles. It wasn't a problem at all. Then I'm just going to continue. Okay, my next stripe, I just click, I'm done printing. And I'm gonna go back. Oops. Back into my collection and do my red stripe. Well, let's do a green stripe since it's right there. Oh, it's red. Okay, so this is just a, one of those basic shapes. So I just inserted a square and squished it down. This is all covered in those other classes. So I just changed the size and squished it into a line and made my own stripe, okay? And you'll see on some other projects I'm gonna show you that you can add in more and more and more and I'll show you how to do that too. This is just the basics right here at first. Again, I'm gonna put it on an infinite, send to printer. Now you'll notice that this stripe is right in the middle of my half inch space. So when I'm using my guide, if I want it to print right next to this line that we already printed, I'm gonna to have to shift my guide up about a third, right? Of the space so that it will print next to it and not leave a white space between. So I just raised my ruler up just a little bit. My printing guide. And then there's my red stripe. Okay. And then I just continued. So for the next stripe, I just did this one is also from the not so basic shapes. Right here, this is a grid. And you know what? It's black and white. And I just left it that way because I liked it. Okay. And then I just flipped my bag and kept going this direction. Right? So really, once I have this image up, what I should have done is normally when I'm doing this, I'm a little befuddled in class today, but I usually would print this one and then flip it and print this same one because you can print this image over and over again until you hit I'm done printing, then you don't have to send anything new to the printer. It just remembers it and keeps printing. So since I was repeating my two, two of the same pattern, I probably should have gone print, turn, print. And that's normally how I work, okay? It just makes it faster because I'm not having to go find the image again in between each print. Okay, so I would just keep going like that on my bag. Okay, so for the tag, on this tag, and you can really, to, back to the bag, you can print anything on the bag. You can cover the entire bag with a printed image if you want to, and I'll show you a package in a minute that I did that. So you can repeat it as many times as you want, just design-wise for this one. I liked this intersection where I could put my little identifier tag, my wooden tag on there. 
Okay, so for this one, I actually put some chalk paint on there um, underneath and it will, you can print over dry paint, you can print on anything like that. So I did that on this tag. I'm just gonna use a raw tag in class today, but I wanna show you how to do text. Okay, so let's go in and just look at how I did it. All right. So since that is a large multi-line text, you can see in my app here that I have a file for where, a file for want, okay? Because they're so big and I wanted them as big as they could be, I'm printing each line individually. There's need, I'm looking for something. There's something. Okay, so I did each word one at a time so that I could print them as large as possible on my tag. That one I don't need to repeat because we're just printing it once. This is why printing, I'm just making sure this round tag is the same size. It is, okay, so that I print it the right side. Okay, so I'm just going to, so you can see here on my screen this time, Rather than lining this up right at the edge to print at zero, it's going to print right in the center because I centered it. So I'm just centering. I made my canvas that I designed on to match the size of my tag. So I did it at two inches. So I know if I put my zero on my ruler right at the edge of my tag, that it's going to center it on the tag. Okay, so we've got something. Then you just go back in and then you could either, because I was saving them for class and because I might wanna make these projects again, I saved each little individual text file, but you could just go in back in and change it. And I'll show you how to do that on this one. I'll show you real quick. If I can find my two, oh, maybe I, that's what I did. Maybe that's what I did. Okay, we'll just do it on this one. Okay, so now I've just clicked on my text. I'm gonna raise it up so you can see it a little bit better. And when you click on the text, this box comes up at the bottom that allows you to change it. And there's a box that says change. And that's where I can go in, delete that word, type in two, okay? And then I can use alignment tools to center it. So center it. Just like that, okay? And now I can go ahead and print. So you don't have to go back and forth and save each file if you don't want to. You can alter it right there while you're working on it. Okay, let's print the two. And then I could change that again if I wanted to. I could change it to where, I could change it, you know, and just do each one in this file just by altering my text right there. Since I already have the other one designed, now you see both ways. You can design it once or you can just change it as you're working. Okay, so where I filled the whole thing, made it as big as possible and centered it again in my two inch space. So I'm just gonna send that to the printer. We have, I have a question tag. for you, Shannon. Sure. Um, how long does the ink last in the printmaker? You know, this is a regular little HP ink cartridge and it lasts a long time. So I have been using, I just put in a new one today, but that's the only the first time I've ever replaced my ink cartridge. And I've been using it for a lot of projects over the months. So it really depends on, I guess, just like in your normal printer, how much you're printing, but it lasts a really long time. It's only doing that little bit of ink. And so it's not using a ton. How you can check your ink levels is right here at the top. You can click on that and you can see the ink level. You can see the little printmaker icon and it shows you how much ink. When I came into class today, my other one was about, mm, like maybe about an an eighth of the bar. And I just wanted to make sure that in class I had really clear, perfect colors. The reason that I noticed it was going out was I started like, just like in a print cartridge in your printer, 
like when one color starts to fade, you notice that your colors are slightly off. So like my black was kind of purple or, you know, like it, they kind of start to look a little bit funny. And that's when I came in and checked this and saw I must be running low on one of my colors. So I just swapped it out. But it does last a really long time. I use it all the time and it lasts really good. It's, it's a good little ink cartridge in there, thanks to the HP printerness of it. So <laughs> you can see too that I got a little bit of excess on my mat and I like to show that you can just use a baby wipe or a damp cloth and wipe it off. That's another reason I like working on this magnetic mat because of that slick surface, the ink just falls up on it and you can wipe it right off, super cool. All right, let's do a ribbon. So we've got our tag, we've got our bag. Let's do a ribbon to put on the top of it. So there is printmaker ribbon that Michaels carries. There is a, also a wider one that I don't have with me today. This ribbon prints really beautifully, but you can print on any ribbon and I'll show you both ways in class today, okay? So here's another guide that I love to use. So this is the ribbon guide and it comes with three different widths that match the three different printmaker ribbons. Okay, but uh, most ribbons are these sizes, so they will fit in here. Oops, I need my smaller ones, actually. Oops, just grabbed the wrong ribbon. Sorry. Okay, we're going to do the wider ribbon. Okay, so all you do is thread it. You put these little pieces come on and off the sides to change out the sizes of your guide. And you just thread your ribbon through. And this is the one time that I don't really use this map when I'm doing ribbon, because you can print as long as you want to print, right? As long as you have death space. Sometimes I'll even put it on the floor and just print and print and print and I'm dragging my printer all the way across the floor to get a long piece of ribbon. So you just hold on one end. Let's get our image up. So this one is a pattern that was just in that cozy and bright. It's a repeatable pattern again. There's so many great images already designed for you that make it so fast and simple. I like using them. Okay, so I just sent it to infinite, so it will print as long as I print this across my ribbon. Send it to my printmaker. And I like to just kind of straighten out my ribbon across my desk space. I find it a little bit easier. If I'm doing a really long, long, long piece, because you're going to move this part and not move the ribbon. So sometimes I'll take a little piece of tape just and tape down the very end of my ribbon so that it doesn't shift while I'm moving. That's just a little tip for you. Okay, let's print on the ribbon. So this guide keeps the printmaker completely centered on that ribbon so that you can just go along, and make your own custom ribbon. Now, for this one, I kind of just did a normal little ribbon slip through the top of the tag. But let's say I'm going to tie a bow. Well, because I've printed on one side of this ribbon, the other side is white. So you know those, my favorite kind of ribbons are when they're the same on both sides, because then when you tie your bow, it doesn't matter how your loops fall, right? So I'm going to print on the other side too, which is something I like to do sometimes when I know I'm tying a lot of bows. So let's do it again. So I don't have to hit anything again. I just have to pick it up. Hit the action button on the top. When it turns green, it's ready. And I just print again on the other side. So now you can see I have this nice double-sided ribbon. I keep these little strips. If I have little extras and like the little white piece I was hanging on to at the beginning, I'll keep those and maybe just use them and tie a little knot like to use on another project. Like this is the perfect size ribbon to use on a card or something. So see how you can tie a little knot, you know, and just do something fun with that so you're not wasting any scrap. Okay, so now I've got this double-sided ribbon. Super fun, huh? And then you just put it right through the tag and loop it up. And I tied it around on my bag with a little bit of baker's twine. I love the baker's twine that is at Michael's. This one's got a gold thread running through it. It's super fun. Some other things that I like to add are um, Jingle bells. So those are on the class list. I'll show you some of my trims that we'll be using today. I like to use their little floral sprigs and balls. You'll see these on a lot of the guests today. Another thing I love are these look to use yarn on gifts. It's super fun. 
And um, today I'm going to show you how I use a joint lead too. So see, this this came from wandering around Michael's and saying what kind of thing, <laughs> but it, they turn out fun. Okay, so there's I our have ribbon. A quick question about the ribbon: Does it have yes. any particular type of ribbon, or can you print on pretty much any kind? You can print on any kind. I've printed on velvet. I've printed on propane. I've printed on satin. The satin does bleed just a titch, but you can still read names, so I, it doesn't bother me. This one is more of a matte cotton ribbon, so it takes the ink really well, but you can really use any ribbon that you want to. They all work. Grab the next thing. Okay, so our last thing for our bag is our tissue paper. I'm gonna grab my magnetic mat again. Because tissue paper is thin, the ink's probably going to bleed through. So if you don't have a magnetic mat, you'll wanna put down a scrap paper underneath your work surface. Something like that. Okay. So normally I would iron this, but it's been in my box prepped for class. So it's very wrinkly. I apologize. So when I tuck in my tissue, so I could print this whole entire piece of tissue, or I just thought maybe I'll just print one top corner and put it at the front. Because you know, when you take your tissue and you get it ready for a bag, you grab it in the middle and you kind of shake it, and one corner kind of pokes at the top, right? So that's how I save on my ink, right? I, don't, I could print the whole piece, but in this case, I don't really need to. So I just need that top piece poking out. Okay, and so my niece has an unusual spelling and an unusual name, as do a lot of my own kids, actually. So her name is Andalyn, and so she can never find anything that has her name on it, right? So I thought it would be fun to send her some gifts that had her name on it. And so this is all that I did. So. I wrote her name using the text tools like we did before. And then this is a basic shape, just a star. And I just changed the colors of them to make it say her name and star. And so even though I'm repeating, you only have to design it once. Come to infinite printing, send to printer. And then I'm going to use my guide again. And I'm just going to start. And technically, you don't have to use the guide on the tissue if you don't want to. I like to because it holds things in place. It's magnetic to the mat. So you can see I didn't hit send on my phone again. I don't have to do that. I can just go straight in. I'm just in the habit of putting my printer back on its base. You can set it aside for a little bit. It'll chirp at you if, it's, if it needs to go back to its base. But I'm just in the habit of doing it. And I like these guide rulers because I'll use them to like the top of my inch mark. I can line that up and right underneath my previously printed line and it helps me to get them really straight. These guides, I love them. So I highly recommend investing if you haven't because they are awesome. Yeah, I'm just shift this. You can see I'm kind of shifting back and forth just to kind of get some randomness in where the stars fall. I'm not being ultra careful about it because again, this is tissue. It's just going to go in there and get crumpled up, right? Okay, so I've got my whole corner. And when I go to put it in the bag, I'll just make sure that part is right at the front. Okay, so maybe we can get a close up of what that looks like. Okay. And it just tucks right in the bag. And then I just added some colored tissue. You can print on the colored tissue too if you wanted to. It shows up on there as well. I'm going to clean my mat. You can see that you're going to get some excess. That's why I love this little magnetic mat. Wipes right off. But scratch paper works just as well. Okay, let's move on to gifts. Okay, so let me show you another kind of ribbon. So on this gift, I did the similar kind of thing that I did on the bag. So this music note image is actually a carol. It's like a Christmas carol. And it was one of the border images in one of the collections. And I just printed it over and over again, just like I did on the tissue paper, but on craft gift wrap paper. And then this, I wanted a bigger ribbon on, right? And so rather than put a tag on this, I went ahead and put my husband's name right on the ribbon. So let me show you how to do that. Because, you know, Michael's has amazing holiday ribbon. It's so beautiful. Okay, and for this one, I'm just going to use a regular guide because this is too wide to fit in my... In my ribbon guide, but you can use a regular guide or you can even freehand it if you're good. 
it's pretty easy to get it pretty straight. And again, this ribbon is gonna wrap around a box, right? So if it's not exactly perfect, it's okay. It's just up to you if how, how important it is to you that you be super perfect. Okay, let me go find my Allen phrase. Oh, so many things, okay. So this one, I designed the same way. Text, chose the font, left it black, and added a basic shape that's this little like star kind of looking shape. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit print, infinite, and printer. It talks to you. This printer is really fun. It reminds me of a little Android in Star Wars. <laughs> I just think it's cute. Okay, so now I can just print across my ribbon, okay? So I could keep going and going, oh, you can see how that came through on my table. So I should have put my magnetic mat under, underneath it. If it does get on your table, I'll clean this up later, but a magic eraser gets this ink right off, okay? So if it does happen to go through, I should have known that this is pretty a uh, pretty open weave ribbon. Okay, so you can see here that I, when I stopped at the end of my guide, I got one A. So to prevent that in the future, what I should have done is seen how many would fit on a scrap paper, right? and no to just repeat it one, two, three, four, five times. So instead of doing infinite, I'd say five times and then it would stop right there. Then I can move my guide over and keep going another five times and then move my guide over and go another five times. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay, so this is just my short ribbon. But to do that box, I did a really, really long piece in just that way. Like I figured out on a scrap paper how many times it could print in that space or just use your measurement like, you know, if it's two and a half inches, then it makes sense, right? So that you know how many times to repeat. So that's how you print on other ribbons. So this one's just kind of a, I don't know what kind of ribbon this is, kind of reminds me of canvas, a canvasy ribbon, like a duck cloth. But I've printed on burlap ribbon. I've printed on, it, it just works on everything. So try it, try it, see, see how you like it. It does work better if it's got a surface to absorb into that we found. So you'll notice I'm using wood, matte paint, ribbon. I did use glossy gift wrap. The craft one was not, was not glossy. It was, it's the craft map. These are some ideas of how to use the yarn and the little floral sprigs tucked in. And then your tag is actually your ribbon, which is super fun. Okay, let's look at this one right here. Okay, so this is another gift that is ultra personalized because I did a big piece of ribbon and I did my own, but I didn't want it to wrap on this one. I did the whole piece, right? This one, I did the whole piece before I wrapped the gift so that I could just have it go like a normal piece of gift wrap. This one, I wanted to only print on the front. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I've got my box and I've got my piece of white. This is just white gift wrap from Michael's that I love all the things you can print on there. And then what I do is I kind of get a guide by just kind of acting like I'm going to wrap, but I'm just going to crease the corners. This is also a tip for really crisp gift wrapping. If you pre crease your corners like this with your fingers when you're done wrapping, so it look really nice. Okay, so I'm kind of creasing where the edges of my box are. I don't know if, that, if you can see that on the white, on the camera, but now I've kind of got a good idea of where my box front is going to be. So I've got this top fold, the sides, okay, and I can see really clearly where I need to print. Okay, so now I can just place my guide so that it lines up the bottom of my guide. If you ever get ink transfer, just grab a baby wipe and wipe off the bottom of your guide. Got a little bit on there from that, the last ribbon. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna line this up right in the corner on that line. Okay, and I'm gonna go into my app, find what I've designed. So again, on this one, I used a lot of images that were just already designed. So like this one is from the Hey Santa collection. It's just the repeatable pattern. I didn't need to do anything to it other than say to, let me see how long this is. We'll try it that way. So I've got it 
Ooh, I made this one really long. I just made it as big as I could to get the full amount. So I only need to repeat twice because it's actually, I might've made it exactly the size. So you can measure, like I can see that this is six and three fourths, almost seven inches on this box. This box was a little skinnier. Okay, so let's go make this fit. So before when I did infinite printing, sorry, for some reason when I come back in here, sometimes I'll come back in and things will be resized. Luckily, it's easy to size them back to what they're supposed to be. Okay, so instead of doing the infinite print on this one, looks like, this was a while ago I designed these guys, sorry, thanks for your patience. I just repeated them myself to get it as long as I needed it to, to match my box. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to here. You can also design on your computer. There is a desktop app or a, on a tablet or a laptop, anything like that. And sometimes that's easier on these big designs. Sometimes I'll go in and just design all of my things and then actually print from my phone. But you can print from your tablets. You can print from your phone. The desktop, um, it doesn't print from. So you do have to um, come back in and go onto your phone. But as long as you have your account that you're logged in, you just create a user account, just like anywhere that you normally would do. And you, everything you do will sync between everything. So if I was to go open my laptop right now, all these changes I just made would be reflected in my saved file. Okay, so I need to actually increase the size of my canvas to, we're gonna do seven inches. So my other box was a little bit narrower. So I'm gonna make this one seven inches. So I just repeated it myself and made it the right size. Okay, on my print preview, I can see a little gap right there. I don't know if you can see it, but if you see that, you just go back in and slide them a little bit closer together. Uh -huh. Okay, send to printer. I only have to send it once. The big file though, so it's gonna talk to my printer for just a second. Okay, so I've designed it to be exactly seven inches. So this should just stop right at the edge, okay? So I've made it just the right size. So there's my seven inch mark. Okay, and then I would take this and just because I've done top and bottom, right? I would just take this, move it down and do the bottom one. Then I would switch to my next color. So this one is the, the pink gingham. So that is also an already designed file in there that's a repeatable pattern in one of the collections. I actually think this one wasn't in a Christmas collection. So look at all the different borders. Sometimes I'll take little screenshots of them so that I remember where they are. And then this one is that great big scallop from the not so basic shapes. And I just turned it red. The ribbon, I just did the same way that I did basically all of the other texts. So it says, Merry Christmas, Ella. And I inserted a couple of little stars and just did a big long piece so that I could wrap it around my box twice and tie it. And then my tag on this one is a unique thing that I, again, came from wandering and wondering what I could print on. And I decided to try printing on clay. So I grabbed some of the air dry, dry clay from the kids craft section at Michael's. Any air dry clay, I've also printed on Salto that I made myself and it works great. So here's my little stars. I just made them with a cookie cutter. I just rolled out my air dry clay, used a Christmas cookie cutter, cut it out, used a little skewer or, you know, little straw or something to make a little hole. And I did them in different shapes. And then on this gift, I just printed this same border, but just on the edges. Okay, so I lined up my guide. I used my smaller guide for this one. I'll just show you on this. Let's see. I want to make sure to get through everything. That I just did it for one inch. So see how one inch is about the length of each little arm. And so I just printed one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. And I let the rest of the ink just fall away onto my map. And that's how I got that cute little outline on that air dry clay star. And then this is just text that's in two lines. So I'll show you that on my already finished project so you can see what I mean. I have another quick question, Shannon. Um, can you yeah. print on plastic or acrylic materials? It will not stick to plastic or acrylic. 
So it will print on vellum, it will adhere to that, but the more shiny or glossy or slick that your material is, the, the less it works. So you want to try for mats, for natural finishes, for fabrics, it works great on fabrics, um, things like that. But it won't, it'll just wipe off just like it was wiping off my mat, my magnetic mat. It'll just wipe right off. So it doesn't work on the, on those things. This is a two line text. So I just wanted to show you this. So I went in first and added a text box that said to Ella. Okay. And then I went in and added a second text box right below it. It says love mom and that way you can have multiple fonts so you can add in as many text boxes as you want on your design and change the fonts and colors independently of each other in that way it's really fun so don't think that you have to fill each one and do every line the same every time if it's small enough that you can do the whole thing in that half inch we'll print this real quick on the air dry clay then go ahead and just build it right into the file so that it saves you time clicking in and out of projects okay so I just set my little shorter guide on top of my air dry clay star. And then there's my little print. Turned out cute. So, and then the only thing I did different on this one, on the other one is I just printed the border around the edges. Okay, but it's even cute just like this if you wanted to make it faster. Okay, so let me show you a couple of other gifts that were done similarly like that. Just so you have an idea. So like this one right here, I printed this one using a candy cane stripe and one of those stripes that I just made myself that's a solid color. And I just did them alternating across the whole piece. Here's where I printed on the doily. So you can see I just used it kind of as a decorative tag. And that also is two line text. And then I printed this dot pattern, which is in the not so basic shapes. It's black and white there, but you can change it to any colors you want. So I just changed my background to a light green and the dot to a dark green. And that's how I got that cute little gift wrap. Okay, one more. This one is on craft as well. And this one is a gumdrop image. So I just put in the gumdrop image. It's kind of short, but it's got four colors. And then I just repeated it. And then I just did a random pattern, printed my ribbon again. This is from a winter collection. It's got little tiny snowflakes on it. You can't really see it on the camera, but. And then I added my little ball sprigs. And then this little tag I made by just printing a little um, in my canvas. Let me show you how it's designed on that one so you can see it. Because I want you to think outside the box of how you can use your design area. Let me find it. Well, this one is done in the same way. This one's done in the same way. So let me show you on this one to save time. Okay, so I added in a square. So there's my jingle bell. See how it can move. And I've got my square that has the color in it. This was another image, the little scallop. I just turned it on its side and made it small because you can rotate things, right? Okay, and then my two lines of text. And I just layered them all up to make the little tag. So that's what I did here. I just put a tiny little bit of the gingham border that I use from one of the collections. I think it's cozy and bright. And then I put next to it the tag, the phrase, and then cut it out. Okay. So it's super fun, super easy. Okay, next. I need to check my time. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay. I wanted to show you some different things that you could do printing directly on the box. Okay. So these two things were printed directly onto the little white boxes that I picked up in the gift wrap file at Michael's. Okay, and so I wanted to show you how you can print directly on the box and how you can do larger text and print it vertically. So let me show you that really quick. I have so much to cover today, you guys, but I wanted you to be inspired to try new things. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull up this file that I already made. So Jamin is one of our sons. His name is, or Milea, here's Milea, okay. So I have another box that's Milea. We have unique kid names. So here's the Milea one. Okay, so how I did this text, I just want you to be able to see it really clearly. Each of these is an individual text box, okay. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Let me see if you can see it more clearly on this camera. <laughs> okay. So each one of those is an individual text box, okay? And I sized them as big as I could to fit 
this space and rotated them onto their side. Okay, so when I'm looking at my screen, it looks like that, they're sideways. But that's how you get that nice vertical print. Okay, let's do it real quick. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna set my guide right on top of my box. All right, and I'm gonna use my guide also to get it straight by using the edges of the tops of the ruler right on there on the edge of my box. Okay, and you don't have to hold it vertically to print it vertically. So I'm gonna turn it sideways because that's a little bit easier for me. Okay, so you can see how that printed tall. And then I just added a stripe, a little bit of that Baker's twine yarn and a jingle bell. And then just that simple, you have a unique personalized gift. This one was done in a similar way. So I took a little round white box. So another thing I like to do with printmaker is use it with die cuts. So I die cut these little candy canes on my Cricut or whatever you have, okay? And, or you can just cut it freehand or with a pattern or with a regular die you run through an embossing machine. And I printed stripes on the candy cane, okay? And then to get this circle on my box, I made this little template where I just cut a circle from a square that's the same size of my box. And then I just used washi tape and just taped it to the sides and then printed the same way I just did those stripes coming down like that. And then when I took this off, it revealed that circle. Okay, and you don't have to do just a circle. You can print in a star, you can print in a heart shape. You can use it, this is called a mask. So you can use a die cut mask to mask off the part you want to stay white. And then when you print across, even though it's getting on your mask, it's not getting underneath. And that's how you can print in different shapes, which I think is a really fun thing to do. Okay, next thing we can print on. So again, wandering the aisles of Michael's, I saw all of these fun fabrics. I love that Michael's has fabrics now, so happy. And I, found these cute ones and I thought I bet I could print in these squares and print on this fabric. So I just took these fabrics and I tore them into strips because for this, for fabric ribbon, sometimes I like that kind of tatty edge. That's just a fun little edge. And to make it longer, I just used my sewing machine and did a little seam in the middle. So you can kind of see that there. Okay, and just pressed it flat. So you can make it really as long as you want. These were the fat quarters. Um, that I got just off the shelf there that were easy to use, okay? And so I made a wider one. That's the other thing about using ribbon, or fabric as ribbon, is you can make it any width you want. So here's all these pieces. And then I just wanna show you how beautiful it looks when it's printed on, okay? So on this one, I don't know if you can see it, but in black, I just did text and I did no peeking, no peeking. So I printed this one three times. So I printed the top line, the middle line, and then the bottom line across the whole width of the fabric. Okay, so it just went from that to that. Just so fun to add that little extra bit. And I tucked in my little sprig. This is another one of those little tags. So on this one, I did four text boxes. So before how I did two text boxes, this one I did four. So the two is its own, but it prints as one, right? So see Alex, my daughter, her name is spelled uniquely. So it's just so fun to be able to print quickly and on things that can't go through your printer with this cute little tool, okay? The other one I wanted to show you was when I printed on Bikina, okay? So this is an image from the Cozy and Bright collection, it's just a little holly berry image, see it right there? And I just printed it in each little square of white. Super easy, didn't take me very long at all. This is a tag from Michaels that was in the like up by the checkout where they have all the fun Christmas stuff right now and I just made a little template this to from was actually an image so I found that to from image in one of the Christmas collections and then just added text boxes for the names and printed it right down the middle the ribbon is printed too these are actually little scraps that were left over from my bags so there's that same ribbon on my bag remember how I said I saved my scraps 
So this one, I just took those little scraps and folded them in half and snipped the ends and made another little additional um, ribbon bit and some more color on my package. So to print on the fabric, it just works the same as everything we've been printing on. I just took my guide, put it right in the square and just printed right onto the square, okay? It works super easy, super fast. Try printing on ribbon, it's so fun. Here's another one that was printed ribbon. So this one is, that same pattern from the bag. So again, you can reuse the things you've already created. So this stripe right here, it's kind of like a grid. I did that on this bow and I just repeated it all over on that wider piece of red torn fabric and then printed again on another little tag. Now, most of these leaves down here, this one is a Christmas image, but these were just from like floral images. And I just changed the color to make them Christmassy and printed them vertically like I did here. So I just printed the vertical, 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 each one. So you could bust out a whole bunch of tags at once by just printing that bottom part, right? A whole bunch of times. So line up your tags and print this leaf on all 10, then print this leaf on all 10, then put the next one on all 10, right? So you can make a system of it and get a little, like your own little, uh, conveyor belt of project making, right? So you're doing each little piece one at a time and then just go back in later when you're wrapping and do the names. I think tags are also a really fun gift to give people. So this was that bag of tags that I grabbed at Michael's and I just made a little set of tags to give as a neighbor gift, okay? So these are just all printed. I just found as many different Christmas trees as I could in all the different collections. Some of them didn't have stars on the top and I just added the little stars by adding a little basic shaped star. And then I just randomly printed snowflakes on the top, the two from, and the Christmas tree. And again, I did the Christmas tree vertically. That's how you can get images to be a little bit bigger, right? So I did it that same way that we showed printing this one. Okay, and then just tied a little baker's twine through the top clip them with a fun clip or a paper clip, or you can even tie Baker's fine around it this way and give it as a fun little gift, these custom little tags. Another fun thing I love to make. So I'll show you how to do this one. So we go through these, also these stickers. My kids love these quick sticker sheets that you can buy. This one I made myself. So this is just an address label sheet. You get it in the camera this way so you can see it a little closer. And I just took an address label sheet and printed an address label, okay? So I printed the little shapes. I'll show them in the app what they look like. Boom, keeps locking. So turn that off. Okay, let's go look at the files. This is the one I was showing you before, right? Where I created it. Oh, I lost connection. Sometimes this video studio is, oh, it's back. Sometimes I lose internet connection in here for some reason. Okay. So these are the little images that I made to print on there. So these labels are about, I don't remember what size they are. Let me see. They're one inch by three inch address labels. So this is going to be centered, right? Because my limit is on this tall, is half inch on how tall it can go. So they're just centered on there. And then each little image is individual. So like right there, that is a snowman from the little Christmas thing and I can move him individually, right? I did the little scallop and the two from, right? And so then what I did was just printed it a bunch of times. So I'll show you how to do that too. Let's do this guy, he's cute. Okay, so I just went and found all the snowmen and just did a bunch of snowmen. There's like a swan. The swan I don't think was from a Christmas collection. It was just a different collection, but I thought it would be fun. Okay, and so now I'm just, a tip when you're doing these labels is they're super flat to go through a printer, right? So see how I've folded mine a little bit in a crease and you can crease it like all the way down if you wanted to just fold where the labels have a division and it makes it a little easier to see where you're printing. Okay, so then I just went ahead and since this is a whole sheet, I'm just gonna use this guide. 
to try to kind of center it on my label. See, there's one. Then I'd randomly come down here and pick another one just because I like it to look fun, right? And another one. And you can see I'm not putting my printer back on the base this time because I can just quickly move it. Okay. And then once I had all of that one that I wanted, I would just go back in and grab the next one that I wanted to do. And in the end, you end up with all of these lovely labels. So these are just those fun labels that are easy to just peel off and stick on a gift and then handwrite your names on there. You don't have to handwrite them. Like you could make each label individually, but I know that when my kids are wrapping their presents, they really like those sticker sheets and they like writing their own names. So then this one was done that same way. So there's the label on a gift. This paper was printed, the ribbon was printed and the label was printed. So this, this print is just a series of stripes, whatever I could fit in different colors and widths in one half inch canvas, added three little basic shaped circles and made them red to make my own little pattern, basically a patterned paper, a patterned gift wrap. And then this is again, a version of the polka dot, just using the bigger polka dot than the last one I showed. A couple little jingle bells and you've got this awesome, cute little gift. Okay, eight minutes, okay. Back to the die cutting. I forgot to show you guys these. Okay, so this was one more box that I did printing directly on the box. You can do text. So each of these texts were a different print. Okay, so those are a little bit more labor intensive, but they're super fun, right? And then I wanted to show you how you can print the tiny little icons. So this is a tiny little stocking. Let me get the side camera here. <clears throat> and show you. So see that teeny little stocking right there? Okay, and so I just printed it and cut it out. So I just like printed it on this sheet, right? And just cut them out. And you can do that as well, just fussy cut them. But, and then just the little name labels, little flags that I put on there. These two are super fun. And these are actually die cut boxes that I assembled. So there's that one, there's this one. So this one's like that folding one. So this is what they looked like when they came out of my die cutting machine. Okay, there's the candy box and here's the little fold over one. And it's really easy to print on these when they're flat. So to do this green, I just printed the green polka dot right across the top of this panel all the way up. And then I designed this star pattern and I used my larger guide and printed it all the way down the back. Okay, so that's, and then once it was printed, then I assembled it. And that's how you can get a look like this if you have a die cutting machine or a pattern for a little bag. Super fun. Again, another little wooden tag. So you can really just find everything that you think would be fun to print on and then try doing it. So this is my other niece, Merit, and uh, she never finds anything with her name on it either. So I just did that little custom label. It's kind of fun. Okay. What else do I have to show you? Okay. I have a couple more fabric things to show you. I hope you're feeling inspired and that you can really see that there is like limitless things that you can print on. Okay, this one combines a lot of the things that I was showing you before. Okay, so this is pink fabric. Okay, so I just had this in my stash. Michael's I'm sure has pink fabric and I just printed right on it. Okay, the little grid. Okay, this would also work if you actually what I might have done is just print this, this same image right here and just printed it on white. Now that I'm remembering, it was a while ago that I made this, okay? But you can print on color, you can print on white to make it a color, then you can customize it however you want. This is another one of those little tiny um, salt or um, air dry clay, I want to call it salt, <laughs> air dry clay tags, just printed it. And this one says from the Kindles, Joy to you and yours from the Kindles. And then I just used the doily. I didn't print on the doily this time, but you totally could. And then these stripes, I just printed directly onto this craft box. So the box doesn't have to be white. It can be another color as well. And you can still print on it. So these were just that same red stripe that I printed before on the gift bag. And each time I printed it, I just changed the color and kept going down until I had printed on the whole box. Another fabric 
idea is these fun little bags from Michael's. So these are these little drawstring bags that you can just find in the party section. And I just went ahead and printed on them. I'm gonna open one up a little bit so you can see it flat. Okay. So it says, happy holidays from the Kendall family. And I just printed these basic shape circles. The ho, 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 just changing color, right? Printed it once, change the color, print it again, change the color, print it again, just like that. And I lined up my bags. So I did the ho, 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 all in red, then ho, 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 all in the middle color, right? So that you don't have to keep switching your screen. That is a really good tip if you're going to do something that is like a neighbor gift or something that you're mass producing. One tip on these bags is I did, like you saw on the ribbon, that is kind of the same canvassy material that we did. It went through onto my surface. So I don't want it to show up on the back of my bag. So a tip is to just cut a little scrap of cardstock, the size that will fit inside the bags and just slip those inside. So you can see I have three here that I slipped inside my three bags as I was mass producing the three bags at once, right? And then when you're done printing, you can just pull it out. The ink dries really quickly once it's on, but the process of pushing the ink into the material pushes it through to the back. So make sure on these little bags, things that have two sides that you always put a little barrier piece in between to protect your surface on the back. Okay, and then I have these little cute, these are for of Hershey Kisses, just to give to my neighbors. I can't decide, tags or Hershey Kisses, I don't know. I guess it depends on if they love sugar or not, right? <laughs> okay, a couple more things I wanted to show you real quick. Okay, so other things that you can print on. So I was wandering through Michael's and found a bat of um, paper pad of crepe, crepe paper sheets. So these are the crepe paper sheets. These are super fun to print on. It takes the ink so good on there and they look so fun and pretty. So I like doing at my, my Christmas Eve dinner, doing little crackers. So these are like British holiday crackers, right? So I just made different patterns and different words and printed them on the tissue paper, wrapped them around a paper tube, right? And then printed on some of the same tags we've already seen. So this one, I just printed red stripes back and forth both directions to make my own gingham on this little star. So that was just that same red stripe, that single red stripe, and I just printed it a bunch of times. Then this one, I just did a simple little December 25th on there. You could do a name, but since I, in our family, we don't have like place cards and people can sit wherever they want. So these, I just did like December 25th is there. Here's that same gingham in green on one of the ornament ones. So another fun thing to print on, right? Great paper, super fun. Okay, and then the last one, we always have things we're shipping at Christmas time. And so I decided why ship plain, boring white envelopes with my handwriting that doesn't look so great to my granddaughters. So the, this is, if you're sending gift cards, if you're sending something puffy, this is just one of those puffy envelopes, but you could do this on any envelope or any shipping box, right? Just make it customized for them. So this is, their names, I added some gumdrop banners, and those I just printed by swooshing it, not using a guide, and just letting the straight line turn curved. So you just take, take your machine and just swoop, and it just works really fun. Try it on a scrap paper until you get the hang of it. Then you can put your names at the top, totally customize it, so much more fun to get in the mail than this. So that was a lot. I hope that you had fun in class today, that you, are inspired to use your printmaker and print on as many different things as you can think of. And that you will have so much fun customizing your holiday this year with the We Are Memories Print Keepers Printmaker. Oh, that's such a long thing to say, but it's so fun. So if you haven't tried it yet, get your hands on one, try it today, you're going to love it. You'll start printing on everything you can see. Thanks so much, bye.